So maybe not the perfect time to do this video because um, we just blew a 30-point lead to the Atlanta Hawks last night. But maybe it is because yesterday, Derek White was announced to be the player of the week for week 22, right? Averaging 20 points, 6.5 rebounds, 8.5 assists. Uh, with a 4 0 record. Shout out to Anthony Davis as well. Monster, monster week. 27 17, 3 0, 2 blocks a game. Jesus Christ. Um, and I've seen a couple of people in the replies talk about, man, <laughs> their fourth option just one player of the week, and motherfuckers want to question if this team is a super team or not. Um, so, a, a, a couple things, right? Number one, I don't know if y'all been paying attention to the Celtics, but we've been load managing like crazy. I don't know the last time the the big five have played um, in in a, in a full game. Drew Holiday's have some. He he's had he had, he's had like a shoulder injury that's been nagging him that the Celtics are being really cautious about. Uh, Derek White was out last night, so last night um, this is not no bail, but we didn't have Derek White or Drew Holiday and. The, the Atlanta backcourt killed us, right? Um, Jalen Brown has been missing a couple games. Well, Jalen Brown actually has been pretty healthy, but Kristaps Porzingis has been the least healthy um, Celtic throughout the whole season, and the Celtics are trying to be really, really cautious with him. Um, yeah, Jason Tatum's even missed a couple games. Um, so, yeah, the, the Celtics recently hasn't... They, they, they haven't been... Fully healthy, which I do believe is a really big reason as to why Derek White was even allowed to have the space to put up twenty points, nine assists, and seven rebounds because he he's been a he's been a second or third option for a, a lot of the games the last two weeks, um, especially this last week. But regardless, regardless, it begs the question: Are the Boston Celtics a super team? Right when their when their fourth option is even capable of winning Player of the Week. You might consider Derek White as, as the third option. Um, but for a majority of people, the pecking order is Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kristaps Porzingis, and then Derek White, right? And then Drew Holiday. Um, when you look at a team that, even though people want to overreact to last night's game, has clinched the first seed before everyone else has clinched a playoff seed, I believe, or, or, or a lot of teams have really clinched a, a, a playoff seed. I don't know. That feels like a lie. I don't. <laughs> that feels like a lie. Um, a, a, a team, regardless, that's on pace to win eighty-two times point seven nine two. A team that's on pace to win sixty-five games, sixty-four games. That because of the record, it might even be higher, maybe sixty-six. Right. Um, and a team that in the Eastern Conference is ten and a half games above. The second seed, and then in the West, was it uh five six games above the number one seed in the West? Is this team a super team? So, for me, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just give y'all the straight answer. I do not think this is a super team. That's not me trying to, you know what I'm saying? Not gas up the Celtics to to lessen the blow when the shit happens. But I think there's a difference between you. You can be a really really good team. But not be a super team. Before we move forward, I just want to shout out the sponsors of this video, Prize Picks, my personal favorite way to play daily fantasy sports. And the game is extremely simple. All you got to do is go on their website or download their app, sign up for an account, and long story short, if you really know ball, you can win some money. We're going to go under the NBA category right here because we love basketball on this channel. You got Steph Curry facing the Miami Heat tonight, and I'm not going to lie, 25.5 seems pretty low to me. So I'm going to go more on that right there. I think Steph Curry's about to have a 30 ball tonight. You got the Lakers versus Milwaukee. Man, Giannis shows up for these types of games. I can't lie. I'm going to go more on Giannis as well. I'm going to go ahead and put $10 on the entry right here. Click place entry and boom, that is how you make an entry on prizepicks.com. And thanks to our friends over at PrizePix. If you guys use code SLZ, you guys can get a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. Links to everything will be in the description. And shout out to PrizePix for sponsoring this video. To me, and maybe this is just me. The first time I really heard of the word super team was the 2008 Boston Celtics when Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett came together and they were called the Big Three. A lot of people from that era even credit that team to, to start the whole super team era. Prior to that, it was a bunch of duos. Prior to that, um, 
there was a big three in Chicago, but we'll we'll, we'll tackle that later. But for for years, it was a bunch of duos winning um, championships. Really, um, just just well built teams that didn't have three All NBA members in their prime or relatively close to their prime on one team. Like these 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 were the teams that were winning championships. Um, and in the case of like oh three, <laughs> Tim Duncan and the boys just won the championship. The next team that followed up to me would be the 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 Heatles, the two thousand eleven Miami Heat when LeBron, Wade, and Bosch formed, right? The next super team after that would be the 2017 Warriors, when KD joined. When KD joined. And then after that, there was a big break. I can't lie. There was a there, there was a really big break. Uh, well, not a really big break. So 2019 happened. Everyone, 2019 was like the the NBA reset. <laughs> it felt like, but after 20, 2019, you know, we we get into this era of duos again. Kawhi and PG go to the Clippers. LeBron and AD go to the Lakers. Kyrie and KD go to the Nets. Um, we go into this era of of duos that dominate the league for X amount of years. You can even look at the Denver Nuggets um, and say they're a, a duo-led team with Jamal Murray, Jokic. I understand Aaron Gordon is a really big contributor to them, but regardless, I, I still think that's a duo-led team. Um, I guess the closest thing after that would be when the Nets got James Harden. That would be the closest thing to a super team to me ever since the 2017 Warriors. Because when those three were playing at the same time, <laughs> understand the sample size is small, but I seen with my two eyes what that team was capable of when they were healthy, and it was some of the best basketball I've ever seen. Deadass, it, it was some of the best basketball I've ever seen. Three bucket getters that fit so well together, um, playmaking out the wazoo, Shot creating out the wazoo, shooting, you know what I'm saying? They, they I even think their depth was underrated during that season um, because if we look back at the 2021 Brooklyn Nets, like, they had depth, bro. Like, Joe, Joe Harris, let's go to the playoffs. Um, Joe Harris was on that team. Jeff, uh, well, Jeff Green only played six games, but Je Jeff Green we was solid for the Nets. Um... Bruce Brown, L I'm pretty sure Blake Griffin even had his moment. Yeah, Blake Griffin was solid, bro. Nine nine point six rebounds, um, in twenty seven minutes of play, shooting fifty three thirty nine. That this is a solid bench player. Uh, Landry Shamit wasn't completely washed. Nick Claxton, uh, coming off the bench, you know, not the click Nick Nick Claxton that we know now, but this wasn't just a big three with no depth ass team. Like this this team had decent depth, bro. I can't lie. Um, unfortunately, we know what happened. Injuries happened with this team. But for me, and maybe this is this is a vague statement as to what a super team is. I do think, for one, super team is a relative term. It's, it's a relative term. As the NBA gets more talented over time, the standard for what a super team is changes and becomes higher with the higher talent pool. Right, because if if the if the criteria is just, I swear to God, because because what made Boston in 08 like so crazy to people was there were three dudes who were capable of putting up twenty five a night, um, on the same team. If that's the standard today, then Phoenix would be a super team, and I don't think Phoenix is a super team. The Clippers would be a super team. And I don't think the Clippers are a super team. Um, ye, let's see. Let's see. There'd be a couple more I feel like that I'm missing. But I feel like there'd be more. Maybe maybe not 25, but 20. 20 three 20 point per game scorers. It feels like every single team has three people, three players that could put up 20 a game. Um, so I do think it's relative. Um, a big three now 
is not the same as a big three in 2005. You know, I, I think the standard is much higher. Um, so do the Celtics fit that criteria is the big question. And <laughs> listen, I listen, I, I, I hear what y'all say about the Celtics team. And the amount of doubt that y'all have with the Celtics team just tells me no. The, the amount of doubt, the amount of, ah, the, this, this team is a fraud in the playoffs tells me no. When y'all tell me that this team isn't beating Denver, and mind you, I, I can see Denver beating us clearly. I think Denver is a really good team that's on our level. When y'all tell me that this team, if they face Miami, is going to lose, um, and then some of y'all, or a lot of y'all even stretch it to, hey, the, the Bucks are not that good in the regular season, but come playoff time, they're going to beat y'all last two. If y'all tell me even the, the 10 seed Warriors, if they, pace, if they face the Celtics in the finals, are, are going to beat us. If y'all tell me, you know what I'm saying, if the Clippers meet us in the, in the finals, they're going to beat us. You're, you're, this is a beatable team is what I'm getting at. This is this is a beatable team for better or for worse. For me, for worse, because as a Celtics fan, I, I do want a super team as a fan of the team. But this is not a, oh, shit, how the fuck do we stop this team-ass team? It's felt like that in stretches, but I think every single fan knows, Celtics fan or not, that this team is a beatable team. This team is not giving, oh, shit. How do we stop this team in the grand scheme of things? And I think, again, a really vague um, definition as to what a super team is. But I feel like that's been a constant when we talk about, you know, super teams that have formed in the past. When, when KG, Paul, and Ray got together, oh, shit, how the fuck do we beat this team? They proved it, and they won a chip, right? 2011, LeBron went and boss, how the fuck do we stop this team? And the reason why Dirk's ring is so like that is because of the fact that it was such a crazy achievement to beat that team with that much star power. 2017, how the fuck do we stop a 73-9 and nine team? Um, You know, 73-9 and nine team that just added a top three player in the world in Kevin Durant. How, how do we stop that? And they won back-to-back -back rings and looked unstoppable, right? Another, I, I feel like a couple of those Celtics teams in the 60s were definitely super teams. I think the Showtime Lakers and the, the 80 Celtics were a super team. Um, I think the 96 Bulls specifically were a super team. Now, I do understand they became more beatable um, in 97 and 98 as Scottie Pippen became more injured. Um, you know, Dennis Rodman wasn't the same Dennis Rodman. Honestly, same thing with the Miami Heat, right? But though that 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 to me is what a super team is. Um, contrary to popular belief, I do not think the early two thousands Lakers were a super team. I do not think any of the San Antonio Spurs teams were a super team. I just have a really high regard as to what a super team is. Um And I think with the Boston Celtics, they just, they just, they just don't, they just don't, they, they're not a super team to me. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, you can make the case. I mean, some some people were really scared of this team once they got Kristaps Porzingis. Some people were ahead of the curve in terms of what Kristaps Porzingis would mean to this team. And this is one of the most talented teams I've I've ever seen. Like I'm not gonna take that away from this team. Um. But to me, just, just saying that the starting five is really well-rounded um, and really talented is not enough for me to classify this team as a super team. I know some people have different qualifications, at least two All-NBA players with an uh, All-Star third option, All-Star caliber third option. Some people say you need two top five players to qualify as a super team. Um, some people say... I don't know. Every everyone has their different criterias, but to me, it's just the the constant with the unanimous super teams. 
that we can all agree on our super teams is that oh shit factor. And this team just don't got it. With how much y'all doubt this team, this can't be a super team. In my eyes. In my eyes. I, and it, 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 super team is one of those words that I feel like has become so overused and has lost its meaning. Because I've even heard some motherfuckers try to convince me that the 2021 Milwaukee Bucks are a super team. Because they got Giannis, prime Drew Holiday, prime Chris Middleton. That's a big three right there. DPOY, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, and, and, and that crew. Really talented crew. But at that point, it's like, oh my God, we're, <laughs> we're, just, we're just calling anything a super team with the 2021 Bucks are a super team. Um, and you can make an argument, too, that you don't... I, I think that the qualifications of a big three doesn't necessarily matter for you to be a, a, a super team because I think um in this discussion there are a couple fringe teams that I'm not sure if they are a super team or not I think the Lakers in 2020 have a bigger claim to possibly being a super team than not because I remember when Woj bomb when the Woj bomb went off that AD was going to the Lakers and in my head and in a lot of people's head Yo, how the fuck are we going to stop LeBron and AD? And then they got a bunch of different pieces to fill out the role uh, the role players. They ended up being a dominant team in their first year, right? Really good depth. And even looking back, bro, like, look at the last, I don't know, 10 championship winners. The 2020 Lakers are giving a lot of them a run for their money. And I'm talking about some of those Warriors teams too, bro. I, man, I, that, that 2020 Lakers team is something else. I'm, I'm telling you right now, bro. The amount of size uh, with the with that dominant duo that that team had is crazy. And I would say the 2020 Clippers are also in that realm as well of, oh my God. You know, like, like, for those who don't remember, that 2020 Clippers team, even though they failed, um, Kawhi Leonard just came off a championship year. Paul George just came off a top three DPOY MVP year. Uh, Lou Will, I believe, just won six man of the year the season prior. Uh, Montrez was top three in six man of the year. Um, they had guys like Patrick Beverly. They had sharpshooters like Landry Shamit. Um, let's see. They had a couple other pieces as well in in, in Zubac, um, uh, Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris is shooting forty eight percent from three in the in the playoffs. So like th this team was solid, and this was after twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah Mar Marcus Marcus Morris was solid for the Celtics, um, the season prior, and then the the Clippers got him. Like this team was like, oh my god. <laughs> Two MVP caliber players leading the helm with two six man of the year candidates. And listen, I still trusted Doc Rivers to be a good coach back then. Um, I still think he's a decent coach, just not a very he's a very flawed coach, but just a decent coach. But this is this is the the line of like, okay, is this a super team or not? Cause I that oh shit feeling, I did feel that when the Lakers got AD. That oh shit feeling. I did get that when the Clippers got Paul George um, with Kawhi Leonard. So, there's a couple of failed super teams as well. I the, uh, Another counterexample, I guess, would be like when, when the Thunder got Melo. Like, some people want to claim that team is a super team. I didn't get that oh shit feeling when they got Melo. I ain't going to lie. And I think that is large in part due to the relative discussion I was having earlier. Because I was like, man, this shit ain't doing... This, this team is not doing nothing to to the Golden State Warriors with KD. Um, another oh shit feeling was 2012, 2013, when the Lakers got Dwight. Oh shit, how do you stop that team? That team did end up being injury riddled and, in my opinion, is a failed super team. But that was another one of those moments. I wasn't alive during that time, but I feel like when the Lakers got Gary Payton and Karl Malone in 04, that specific iteration of that Lakers team, in my opinion, is a super team. There's a couple other situations that we can name. Um, but, yeah, I, I just hold that that super team uh, 
term to a very high regard. And I think it should be, bro. When we're talking about team, like super team, that, that that's a that's a one up from a great team inherently. Every great team is not a super team. You know, there can only be a handful of super teams. But with that being said, let me know what y'all think. Are the Boston Celtics a super team or not? With that being said, I am out, man. Peace.